November 26, 2021. Jay takes the winding road up California's Mount Wilson on his way to the observatory at its summit. The weather is unusually clear. On his way up, somebody casually tries to kill him, but that does not bother Jay. He is focused. Because although Jay can't hear the ominous music we hear playing in the background, he feels something is amiss today. And while he illegally parks his car on the roadside, he is thinking about the bodies in the trunk of his car and what he should do with them. Maybe this location wasn't right. Maybe somebody scared him away. Whatever the circumstance, he moves position and now we find him in a parking lot a bit further down the road where he is secretly recording some random strangers murmuring nonsense. Our world is so flat. As he scans the horizon, he is feeling the tension rising. What he is about to witness is going to change the lives of thousands. He recognizes Point Loma. 189 kilometers away. There is South Coronado Island, 250 kilometers in distance, and Mesa Rodonda, 234 kilometers. But what is that really? Mexico? We are talking, of course, about Jay Tolan. Hello, my friends. From the YouTube channel Jay Tolan Media One. And with his permission, I used some clips from his video titled The Infrared Flat World from Mount Wilson Observatory that aired back in November 2021 to create that intro. And like most of Jay's videos, this one spread like wildfire through the dry flat earth community. It has over 30,000 views, no kidding. He is a dedicated flat earther himself who spends his spare time gathering high quality footage of. That's right, the globe. And my favorite observation of him by far is this smoking hot shot of Mount San Jacinto. Ja, Jacinto. Hasi, hak, he, hesint, whatever. This mountain all the way from Malibu. Okrelos fairly demonstrated that this is actually the expected view for a globe and not for a flat earth. But this video is actually not about Jay's failures in the past or present, it's about me. Or should I say about the struggles that I encountered trying to explain what we saw earlier. Jay really observed something at the horizon that I could not explain. At least not for a long time. And I believe that, to this day, nobody has explained it publicly. I don't think even Jay knows what it was. In his video, he suggested it is Baja California, the northernmost state of Mexico, which is about 300 kilometers away from Mount Wilson. 300! And if that is indeed the case, yes, the Earth might truly be flat. By the way, no, Jay was not driving around with human bodies, I was simply referring to the bodies of his cameras he had laying in his trunk, just to get your attention, and I hope that it worked. But that day in November he was driving up to the observatory at Mount Wilson, and he was almost hit by a car that was cutting him off. They almost ran into the back of that car. And the weather was unusually clear, as we can see in the footage. The satellite images for that day confirm this. No clouds present in the neighborhood, and especially not in the direction of Baja California. Because of his good equipment and his crisp sharp results, he quickly lays the fire at our feet. But because he provides such good quality, his images are ever so satisfying to analyze and debunk. In this case, for example, we can use Peak Finder, input his location and observer's height, which happens automatically now that I think about it, and we produce a prediction from his location. The spot seen through his camera is easy to recognize, it's this parking lot near Cosmic Cafe. The expected panorama shows great resemblance with Jay's footage, and that's why I love Peak Finder so much. It's quick and easy to set up, and the animation that is playing when we change the observer's height is truly satisfying. It gives a good sense of scale, doesn't it? 
but it also has its limits. While Jay is zooming in, revealing more and more details, I don't think Peak Finder is doing the footage enough justice anymore. Especially because <clears throat> it does not render North and South Coronado Island. And that's strange. So we need to crank up the level of detail on our end, don't we? Introducing you, Deutschel, the brainchild of Ulrich Deutschel, who, in my opinion, has created one of the best panorama simulators out there. It's slightly more complex than Peak Finder, yes, but it also allows you to navigate to an observer's location using the Google Maps or the Google Satellite images, and it makes it possible to alter the elevation height and field of view. Plus, and this is the interesting part, you can increase the render distance to 750 kilometers. It's unbelievable. Thanks, Jay. I agree. The difference with Peak Finder is rather clear, isn't it? The details here are superb. So let's have some fun. And despite the fun it is to track all of those shots, we are actually diverging from our task, and in fact not any closer to answering our burning question. While most land masses align rather well, North and South Coronado Island are still missing from both our predictions now. And there is no sign of our Mexican smear either. Similar to Peak Finder, Udoichel uses a globe and the elevation data of the surrounding area to generate its panoramas, and also like Peak Finder, a standard amount of refraction is used. And that's the reason why the Isle Twins aren't shown, because with a standard amount of refraction, the islands would simply be obscured by the horizon. And unfortunately, both apps don't allow us to change the atmospheric conditions. So I cried for help, and the help came. Bart runs a YouTube channel called Science It Out, and he was following a discussion I had on Discord. He reached out to me, offering his help. The guy literally wrote a simulator himself, and he was eager to do some renders. He downloaded the data tiles for the area, set up the entire scene, added a standard temperature gradient, enabled globe rendering, plugged in the observer's location, while well, I was actually not doing really anything, Et voila, a shiny landscape emerged from the code on his computer. I was impressed. <laughs> I can only dream of learning the skill to ever pull something off like that. I noticed Jay used footage from two different locations. It's a bit tricky. Following his route on a map, we discovered Jay parked his car in the shadow of the radio ridge antenna. And this is most likely the spot from which he shot this amazing detailed panorama. The resemblance with Bart's render is cool. But just like Peak Finder and U Deutschel, we don't find any of the Coronado Islands. But then he shared another one. Well, hello there. Apparently, Changing the temperature profile from a standard atmosphere to one with a constant temperature did the trick. To be clear, he didn't alter the observer's height in any way. His program simply calculates the path the light is actually taking from the object to the camera when it traverses the atmosphere, taking into account the temperature of each single layer of air. This was exactly what I was looking for. A tool that allows you to influence the amount of refraction to test how extreme it must be to explain the observation. And the fit was most definitely better. Just not Jay's smudge. And that's of course concerning. I was hoping some distant terrain would pop up. And by the way, we are still missing one island. 
but the beast was unleashed. Science it out was really sciencing it out. He tried first a temperature inversion, and both islands emerged. Hooray! Was this what really happened in November? But before I could ask that question, he was already on top of it and dug up the measured temperature profile for that same day in November and boxed that into his program. And then this came out as weird, a flattening effect around the peaks of the island and the mountains to the left are all completely messed up. But it turned out that the data he used was from 12 p.m. UTC, universal time, meaning it was actually still midnight in California. That was most definitely not the case, so Bart found the data from 12 hours later, matching the time of observation better, and then this was the result. Then he rewrote the script, he literally rewrote the script to even implement the humidity data that he found in the measurement tables to get the most reliable result. And why I was burning with anticipation, we got this. And it didn't match anymore. It was all wrong. So while using the actual data, and the actual known refraction formulas in our attempt to get the most accurate prediction out of it, we ended up with a result that matched the observation the least. Is the Earth really not a globe? Will we ever know what this thing actually is? By the way, this data is coming from the University of Wyoming and they operate a station called 72293NKX in Miramar, north of San Diego. And since the station is on a hillside at an elevation of 137 meters, the lowest measurements start at that height. Bart had to extrapolate the lower portion of the atmosphere for every render. And as it turned out, he forgot to define the temperature at sea level in that last render. His program simply autofilled the value to be 14 degrees Celsius. But remember, it's the end of November. The gunpowder, treason and plot. So it wasn't the humidity levels after all, or his new code for that matter. And while looking up the ocean's temperature to be actually 16.3 degrees on the 26th, we came up with our final atmosphere profile and final render. We cranked the resolution up 400% for more detail and more whoa. And out of the ashes arises a perfect match. In the meantime, I was playing around with you, Deutschel, because I wanted to know what land we could find in the direction between Point Loma and the islands. By elevating the observer's height, you can kind of look over the curve of the Earth and reveal more land. As we increase our elevation by 3000 meters, one small peak, identified as one of the Islas de Todos Santos, is revealed behind Point Loma, not to the right. This is in fact what Jay thought the smudge was. So Jay's statement that it could be land 200 miles or 300 kilometers out went up into smoke. I guess he never checked. And when I increase the elevation by 30,000 meters or 30 kilometers, it is revealed that there is actually land, but it is over 700 kilometers away. <gasps> Did Jay reach a new world record again? The current one for longest land to land observation is 443 kilometers from Peak Finistrel in the Pyrenees to Peak Gaspar in the Alps. Not only is this current record possible on a globe, it also burns down any notion of a flat Earth. Speaking about flat Earth, this is the view from Mount Wilson if Earth were actually flat. Not really what Jay observed, is it? So, if it's not land, maybe we are again seeing clouds? Now, looking at the satellite imagery for that day, we notice one single cloud candidate speeding southeast. That's interesting. So let's rotate the view for our convenience and mark the area between Point Loma and the islands. The cloud does cross the area at around 23 UTC, that's 3 p.m. local time. Jay told me in an email that he left the mountain at around 3 p.m. And also, the cloud kind of disappears. The rest of the sky is entirely clear, so I don't really think that this cloud is what he saw. Well, I remember spending about three evenings looking at these images 
and when I was about ready to give up, I noticed something rather odd. The day before, there were some bigger clouds over Punta Baja, but also this bizarre looking smear extending towards Isla de Cedros. It doesn't look like a normal cloud, also. It's just a whiff of cloud. It's moving fast against the wind. Uh, let's check the high resolution rapid refresh or HRRR smoke graphics. Oh my. Speaking about this smoky atmosphere, turns out there was a big wildfire northeast of Ensenada. We can actually see that in the footage that I was playing earlier. It's the cutest if you saw that. But it really took me three days to figure it out. Apparently, around the time of observation, the smoke easily reached heights over 6,000 feet, or that's 1,800 meters. And when I asked Bart to add a column of smoke over the bay of Ensenada, our mystery was finally solved. Who would have thought? Question I pinned left down in the comment section is, do you agree? Or do you have other thoughts about what it could be? By the way, I left a couple of hints in the video that this wildfire was actually the clue. Share the ones that you can find in the comment section below. And uh, while you're there, consider subscribing for more like this content. Now, I definitely need to thank Bart for his tremendous amount of work and a very nice collaboration actually together. He's a very helpful person and was always ready to just uh, give, me a, give me a hand. My greatest gratitude buddy, link to his channel is in the description. I also want to thank Ulrich Deutschel for providing such a powerful tool for everybody to use for free and for answering all of my questions. I most definitely want to see this tool evolve into something even greater. And of course, I want to thank you, the viewer, for sticking around through all of this. Now, I have to say, uh, it took me a while to finally finish the video, but I enjoyed working on it, so let me know if you want to see more stuff like this. I'll see you down in the comments. Until then, take care my fellow apes, bye bye.